Live now at Casino Rama, Steve Molitor, the latest chapter in his odyssey tonight. Rumble at Rama 5 against Argentina, Seferino, Labarda. And hi, everybody. I'm Rod Black, and welcome to Rumble at Rama 5. Tonight, a South American challenger comes to Molitor House. Casino Rama has become his place, his fifth defense in his last 14 months, and this is the most important one of all. The big one before the next big one. With a win tonight, he virtually assures himself of a shot at the WBA champion, Celestino Caballeros. But he has to get things done here first tonight. With more on that, let's send you ringside to Joe Bowen and Russ Anber. Well, thank you very much, Rod. There's no question that in the football world, you would think of this game as maybe the trap game. Is that what's going to happen tonight? Well, it might. And I think that the important thing is that Molitor doesn't look ahead, stays focused on this fight. But there's no doubt about it that what he wants to do is aim for bigger fish. And that bigger fish is Celestino Caballero. This fight, I expect Molitor to come out and prove that he is among the elite in the world and that he is ready to unify the world crown. Well, there is no question that he is ready as we get another look at Steve Molitor in the locker room. He's in tremendous shape and he is very motivated. Yeah, for sure he's motivated. There's no doubt about it. I mean, here he is making his fifth title defense. I mean, he's been a fighting champion. He's come here. He's performed. He hasn't ducked anybody. Everybody they put in front of him, he has fought. And he's looking for bigger things. And I definitely think that the guy he wants is Caballero. And this fight with Labardo, the important thing is Labardo is coming in here and he's stepping up. I mean, he's taking on the champion of the world. This is without a doubt the best guy Labardo is ever going to meet. So this was this is a great opportunity for Mahler and he has to show that he's the champion. Both are left-handers. Both are southpaws. What kind of a fight can we expect? Well, I think that Molitor has proven that he hasn't had any difficulty with southpaws, except for that little flash knockdown against 3K Battery. He's handled the southpaws very well. He's comfortable with it, so I don't see that being a factor at all. I think now he's going to come out, maybe show some new moves with his new trainer, Stefan LaRouche, so that's going to be an important thing to see the adaptation that he has made with LaRouche, and I think all this is to get ready for Celestino Caballero in November, Joe. We're ready. The crowd at Ram is ready, Rod. Yes, they are, Joe Bowen. The Argentine's first pro fight out of his country in Molitor House tonight. Steve Molitor defends his title when we come back. Rumble at Rama 5, brought to you by Orion Sports Management. This is Steve Motter, IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World. I'm dedicating this fight to the troops overseas. Good luck, guys. Stay safe. You're in my prayers. We are back live. Casino Rama, Steve Molitor's message to the troops. His message tonight, an impressive win over his Argentine challenger and an impending Unification bout on the horizon. The fighters ready to go. Let's go ringside. Once again, Joe Bowen and Russ Anber. Thank you very much, Rod. And here is the challenger entering the ring, Seferino Dario Laparda. 27 years of age, joined by his trainer, Carlos Tello Sr. and Carlos Tello Jr. It is the biggest night of his boxing life, there is no question about that. Absolutely, and he's coming into the ring as a solid underdog. Not only is he coming into the hometown and the home ring of Steve Molitor, but he's also coming in here vastly under-experienced in terms of quality of opposition and in number of fights. Molitor, who's had 27 professional bouts and who is making the fifth defense of his title for Caballero, this is his, he's only had 18 bouts and has not fought near the level of opposition that Steve Molitor is. Folks in Winnipeg will remember 1999 in the Pan Am Games, and uh, this young man won a bronze medal there. But this fight is the first fight that Steve Molitor is under the guidance of Stefan LaRouche. Yes, he is. And this is 
this is a little bit of an adjustment for him, not have, after having been with Chris Johnson for so long. But Stefan LaRouche is a professional. He has experience working with world-class and world champion boxers. So if there is, there's for sure there's going to be a certain adaptation period, but we'll get a look, and I don't think it's really going to be a factor as to the adjustment that Molitor is going to have to make. And now about to enter the ring is the IBF junior featherweight title champion from Sarnia, Ontario, the Canadian kid and Steve Molitor. The fifth time that he has defended the title here at Casino Rama. That's incredible, the work rate that this kid has put up with, has done in, in defending the title now for the fifth time. That's a work rate unheard of by any world champion in boxing today. And here comes the Canadian kid. Stefan LaRouche, his new trainer, joined by Bob Miller and Billy Martin in the corner for the Canadian kid, Steve Molitor. And joining him in the ring, holding the championship belt, is IBF super middleweight champion, Lucien Boutte. Who he works with in Montreal under the guidance of uh, Stefan LaRouche. The three of them. The three world title holders there pushing Ladies each other. That's right. Bute, Diakonu, and Molitor. Let's go to James Jardine. Scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. This contest is sanctioned by the Ontario Athletic Commission as also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. Doctors at ringside are... Dr. Jason Sue and Dr. Alistair Murray. The timekeeper is Willem Mackey, and counting the knockdowns is Dave Paulette. Judges for this world title fight are from Union, New Jersey, Mr. Larry Hazard, Jr. From Janesville, Wisconsin, Mr. Mike Fitzgerald, and from Toronto, Mr. Alan Davis. And when the action starts, the referee from New York State, Mr. Charlie Fitz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our packed house here at Casino Rama, for our viewers on TSN, coast to coast, and especially for the brave men and women watching in on the Canadian Armed Forces Television Network. Introducing the principals, on my right and in the blue corner, he is wearing the silver and with tr silver with blue trim, and went in this morning at 121 and one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect 18 fights, 18 wins with seven knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cordoba, Argentina, introducing the challenger, Seferino Dario Lombarda. And his opponent across the ring, on my left and in the red corner. He is wearing the red with silver trim. Went in this morning at already 121 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, also a perfect 27 wins. No losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is undefeated, the reigning and defending IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World.
ladies and gentlemen, this fight is 12 rounds, IBF Junior Featherweight World Championship. You both know the rules, obey my commands, and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves now, come on fighting at the bell. Everything is ready to go. Steve Molitor defending his title for the fifth time. And Seferino Labarda trying to win the lottery. And here's the tale of the tape. Even height at five foot seven apiece, but I think the key in this is look at number of rounds box. 202 for Molitor, 71 for Labarda. Here we go. And Labarda quickly out of the shoot, trying to be the aggressor here in round number one. He's in a casino, he's rolling the dice. And he hopes to be able to walk away almost as a lottery winner here. And Molitor, as is his usual manner, study, explore, learn, and see what the opponent has before he shows his cards. Both fighters appear to be in excellent shape, and you know that Steve Molitor is from his work in Montreal with Stefan LaRouche. Labarda with the silver trunks and the teal trim. Maybe the longest pair of boxing trunks I've ever seen. <laughs> Almost pants. <laughs> yeah. Put a tie with him, you can take him out. Wild hook there by Labarda misses. A combination by Molitor to score. Midway through round one. If I'm Molitor right now, I'm feeling really good that this guy wants to come at me and keep throwing a lot of shots th this early in the fight. It's 12 rounds, and 12 rounds is a long time. If he, if, if he wants to get confident, that's perfect. Let him come, and I'm going to time him, and he's going to walk into a left hand or a right hook. But I'll let him get confident first. Bit of a feeling out process here for Steve Molitor as Labarda continues to press the attack. Molitor keeping him away with the right jab. Overhand right misses by Molitor and now Labarda back to the middle of the ring. Molitor sees everything coming. He's got the hands up nice and high. When he wants to move to his right, he moves to his right. When he wants to step back over to the left, he does, and he picks everything off that Labarda throws. The translator at the press conference suggested Labarda had an illusion of winning, and Steve Molitor quickly said that's what it'll be, an illusion. <laughs> I think it may have been more in the translation that got misconstrued from the Labarda camp. Barta continuing to press the attack. Less than 10 seconds in the round. The opening round of 12 for the WBA or the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship and a chance to meet Celestino Caballero as far as Molitor is concerned. And a feeling out process for the first round. Let's see if we can get a listen. Can't really hear what LaRouche is saying to him, but you know that that was exactly their plan to come out, just move, let's see what this guy has got, and probably gave away the first round just for inactivity, just by inactivity. An opportunity here, too, in their first fight together to learn one another, and LaRouche has to learn what buttons to push and everything else as they go through this. Absolutely, but I think a lot of the learning with that joke gets done in, in the gym. That's where really you bring it here. That's what the preparation is all about, and preparation is the key. So if they learned anything, it's been in the gym, and not so much here on a first-time basis.